MMA locker room here, your official source for everything in the MMA sports. We're back at it, folks. We got a live interview for you guys. I got a special guest backstage. Uh, this guest that I got backstage that I'm doing an interview with, it's my second time getting to interview him, you know, so he's, he's kind of a familiar friend over here at the locker room. But, I mean, when it comes down to it, you got some big events coming up, and everybody was asking to get on this card. What card is it? UFC 300, right? Everybody was asking to be on it. But you know what? This guy backstage didn't ask to be on it. You know what? We want to know what happened? They asked him to be on it. So out of nowhere, we got a new fight announcement, and we got the tarantula. Welcome to the show, man, on UFC 300. How you doing today? Doing pretty good, man. Enjoying the day. Got it, man. Got it, man. So what's going on right now? Give the people your timestamp. Right now, I'm in California. You know what I mean? Long Beach, California, Lake Elsinore. Same thing. It's about 1210. Where are you residing at right now? I'm in SoCal, too. I'm in Orange County. Got it, man. Got it. So you just you 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 loving the little sunshine. You loving the vibes out here right now because you're always smiling, man. Tell the people, though, why you're always smiling so much, man. Like, what's that big smile about with the tarantula? Man, there's, there's so many reasons to smile, you know what I mean? Like, alive, enjoying life, the sun is shining, you know, God has blessed me. Like, there's so many reasons, so why not? Got it, man. I feel you. I mean, also, too, back in the win column, you know, kind of a bittersweet moment, Um, you know, since it was over Bobby Green. Well, but with that being said, now you and Bobby Green are both on the same card, UFC 100. Who would have thought? Yeah, dude, that was crazy. Um, you know, hats off to him. I can't wait to watch him perform against Jim Miller. I think it's going to be a, a killer fight. I think uh, I think Bobby gets his hand raised for that one. So, yeah, you know, uh, you got to get the hand raised. Both both of us got to get our hand raised this time. Hey, now I feel you on that one, man. Um, Speaking about that, though, um, it didn't take you a long time in your last fight. You got it done in the first round. Um, Talk to me a little bit about your last fight and, you know, how hard was it to make that weight? Uh, I think you lost a lot of weight within what, the, like the seven days, right? Yeah, it was uh, about nine days, like eight, nine days. Um, I made made 56 from, I think I, I think I started like 83. So, yeah, made the weight. It wasn't, it wasn't too hard. The only hard part was like, like the last, like the last pound, pound and a half was kind of like, it was just being, it was just, just, just arguing with me. So, you know, but we got it all. And yeah, it was, it was smooth. Though. It was smooth. Got it, man. After that performance, uh, did you get any uh, bonuses off that performance? Yeah. You can, yeah. You know, they, they took care of me. <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Especially taking a fight on short notice like that, you know, you really reap those benefits on it. And then it seems like, you know, the, the UFC, you know, they're um, I don't know if they're doing you a favor or they're doing the fans a favor, but I mean, now you're on UFC 300. How long did you know about this fight and um, how did it take place? Um, I found out when everybody else found out, to be honest. So, um, you know, I, I wanted to be on it, tried to make it happen and did it. And then, you know, I ended up saying like, hey, like you can get on. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll jump on. And then, you know, the rest is history. So I'm happy to be a part of the, the event. You know, it's, they're going to be historic. So I want to just go out there and perform and put on a good show, you know, and uh, make some more history happen. Got it, man. And uh, what? So lately you've been on a lot of fighters' radars, it seems. You know, a lot of people have been calling you out. morcano has been the one most vocal about it, calling you out. Uh, is this personal or just business, man? Man, it's always just business for me. That, that man calls everybody out. Any lightweight that wins, that's, that's a higher rank than him. He's said their name, you know. So I don't, I don't pay too much attention to it anymore. It's just, you know, just I, I, this is not me, you know what I mean? I just like... Uh, we're gonna fight. Like, let's just fight. Uh, how about that? You know. Got it, man. Got it. And uh, let's talk about the fight, the matchup, a little bit, man. Um. So in this matchup, you know, you're familiar with the rare naked choke. Uh, you have two of them. Uh, you won with Brock Weaver. You won over Urso Urso Medic. How comfortable are you with that rare naked choke? You know, I think people forget that I've, I've been doing jujitsu for a very long time. That's one of the arts that I actually started with. So um, I'm very comfortable. It's just, um, 
yeah, dude, I'm comfortable on the ground, I'm comfortable wherever the fight goes. You know, I'm also, I, don't know, I don't feel like I slack or lack in any submission game, offense or defense, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you too, man. Um, You know, uh, fighting is just 50% offense. You can't forget about that 50% on defense. Never been subbed in the UFC or anything like that. Um, Your opponent has eight wins by rare naked choke. It seems like that's kind of like his path to victory. With that with that being in, in your mind, uh, do you do anything a little bit different going into this camp and try to prepare to try to defend that a little bit? Or you're just like, I already put in the work already. Um, you know, I put in the work already. I just go do a little bit of refreshment. I've been going down to Carlson Gracie Marietta with my buddy uh, Thomas Cronin, who is a very high level black belt, similar build to Moicano, but definitely a bit stronger. Um, goes for the back take. We've been doing drills. I've been working with him. You know, just just refreshing. And you know, it's it's already hard to take my back. So you know, it's just one of those things. Like you said, you know, reiterating the. The submission defense, you know, it's been there. It's always going to be there. So it's one of those things. Got it, man. Yeah, no, uh, Carson Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Uh, yeah, a lot of people don't know you've been putting in that work over there uh, for years now. And, you know, that's kind of like your bread and butter was the Jiu Jitsu and stuff, you know. And it seems like when you went on that little four fight win streak finishing everybody, it seems like when I talked to you then, you kind of got back to going to the wrestling, going to the grappling, going to the jujitsu, right? Yeah, you know, I started emphasizing that a lot. Um, you know, I I just, I just have to learn and level that up again, you know? And then even lately, like this last year, it's been more wrestling than, than jujitsu. So, you know, I was happy I got to get back on the mats, get back in the gi a little bit more consistently. And I'd already started before I got the fight. Like I was already getting back on the mats and doing gi. So that, that's already helped. It already, like, pre-prepared me for this fight. So, yeah, you know, like, like I see his back take. He's long. You know, he tries to throw, throw the hooks in right away. And, you know, it is what it is, you know. And it's like I know he's probably thinking about, like, like the, the, the Dan fight. Dan got my back, like, the end of the second round, I think. But, you know, it's like I look at the clock. I was good. I was like, he was squeezing. I was like, I was going to I was gonna be good regardless. So this is one of those things. And, you know, I didn't even train jiu-jitsu like that for Dan. So. You know, now it's now it's sharp, so now there's there's <laughs> there's no hole there. So yeah, I know he's banking on that, but you know, it's all good. What belt are you uh in jujitsu? I am a brown belt. I like the brown belt. <laughs> I didn't I even know. even when I got my brown belt, I didn't think I was gonna get my brown. Um, but it was it was pretty cool, it was surreal, you know. I was I was hyped, I was happy, but you know, I I just don't do a lot of gi, so that's the only, that's the biggest reason why I haven't I haven't uh, been promoted, so you know, like whenever, whenever my professor feels like it's time, then you know I'll, I'll get in the gi, do some more, and then you know level up. But for now, I'm happy with my brown belt. I mean, speaking of leveling up, I've seen it done before. I mean, Tyrone Woolley got his belt after a win by sub over Darren Till. Other fighters got their uh, belts too, even just by beating like a highly accredited, uh, acclaimed uh, jujitsu person. What about, you know, you go out there and finish Moicano and, you know, we, we level up and get another belt, being that, you know, he's one of the better uh, jujitsu specialists, right? That is very, very highly likely to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I thought about that. I, I definitely could see that happening. So, you know, we'll see. So with that being said, man, where do you see this fight taking place, man? Both of you guys like to finish each other, uh, finish opponents in the first round. So where do you see this fight taking place on the on the feet or on the mat? You know, honestly, honestly, I, it's primarily going to be on the feet. You know, I I watched this fight with Drew Dober, and you know when he got touched, he went went to the grappling well. You know that's usually what happens, and you know it's that it's. Uh, I, bruh, I, I think I think it's just gonna be a first round finish. You know what I mean? That's that's all I can predict. Um, I think it's gonna stay on the feet. Uh, I think, you know, I think a lot of things can happen. You know what I mean? But it's gonna primarily stay on the feet. And it's, at the end of the fight, bro, I just want to get my hand raised. That's it. That's all I see. That's all I envision. That's all I want to like predict is that I get my hand raised.
Got it, man. Uh, I can't 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 go against that, man. A win is a win in there. Uh, but let me talk to you about during the fights. You know, this is one thing I always like to ask. Adrenaline's high. Um, do you make adjustments more off of what you hear from your coaches or more off of what your opponent gives to you? Um, honestly, honestly, more of what what they give to me, what I see, like like right in front of me. You know, because we do a lot of studying. And, you know, they're still there. Obviously, they make adjustments on the fly, too. So it's all about those quick adjustments, like when when the nerves are high. And I feel like the, the better man always gets gets the upper hand once those adjustments are made really quickly. And then, you know, going in between rounds, if it gets there, going into the corner here and there advice, like it definitely helps a lot, too. So, um, you know, it, that, that definitely goes both hand in hand. And it's also just about like having the fight IQ to see see these things on the forefront and just be able to. Um, adapt right away. Speaking about adapting right away, talk to me about the young Jalen Turner coming into the UFC, um, head hunting everybody to the more patient Jalen Turner now, picking his shots and looking like a sharpshooter. Man, um, you know, I I just got so much more comfortable, and I just understand that I don't need to, I don't need to be in a rush to finish. I don't need to be in a rush for anything. And it just helped my attributes because, you know, a lot of guys started like backing away and I had to like stalk and walk forward a lot. And I like messed up my distance management and I learned how to fight forward really well, but I've always been such a great uh, counter striker. So now I just kind of utilize my length to a different, to a different uh, advantage and Dang, I can't get too much game out, but you know, it just, <laughs> it, just it, um, I just learned how to use my length in a different way, you mm -hmm. know. So the distance game got opened up even more, and then when my opponent feels like they can close it, I still have the advantage. So that's all it is. That's like me being more methodical, honestly, me just implementing a lot more boxing and being more comfortable with my hands and being more comfortable with seeing the strikes coming. Or even like slipping a strike just off an inch or just off a hairline, just getting my head off the center line and being able to fire right away. That's been the biggest, that's the, that's the newest thing to my game, honestly. That's the newest thing to my striking. That's why it looks so much more poised because I'm comfortable there. I mean, yeah, new, newest thing to your game, too. I mean, young fighter like yourself, one thing I, I notice is your Instagram posts, you're always kind of in the gym and doing stuff. Um, so can you talk about how it was training with like uh, the likes of Kazmat Shemaev and uh, bigger weight classes and sparring with the likes of Sean Strickland and everything like that? Um, talk about how that prepared you for your division. And do you do that often or is it just based off of uh, pretty much your weight that you walk around at? Um, honestly, I never really train with lightweights, bro. You know, because. It's not fair. No, it's not even. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, like, like that too, but like, just humbly speaking, I just don't want to like really train with people that I'm going to possibly end up fighting. If they're a different organization, cool, like I'll do it. But also like, I feel like my body style, my frame allows me to train with heavier guys striking wise. And then like, you know, grappling wise too, you know, they do overpower me. They, do, they are a lot stronger than me, but you know, it's like, I like, I like to feel that that uh that strength and resistance of, of of the the bigger dudes and then i like to go with the lighter guys to get that speed and technique to help me be sharp and help my uh my fast switch be on par because it's like you get the brute strength from the heavier guys and then you get the technique and that uh cardio aspect from the lighter guys so you know it's like the best of both worlds that's how i look at it and then you know like i do spar with lightweights and train with lightweights every now and again every blue moon but you know it's like it's either you know it's either the heavy guys or the lighter guys that's it got it man uh so training with kazmet chamai is he really different like that when he's actually out there training um the, he has he has such a high pace and high output and honestly, like when I when I did train with him, you know, I, I felt like I gave him so much respect, you know, and you know that that probably uh, diminished my output of you know what I could have brought to the table for him, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I still gave him a decent look, but bro, like he like he he uh, he had his way with me, you know. I've been I've been had a I haven't felt like big brother like that in a while, and I'm gonna just keep like keep it honest. Like I have nothing to hide about it, you know. So you know, it was one of those things, like. Uh, it is what it is. <laughs>
<laughs> Got but it, man. I mean, even when I quit Strickland, like I've been, I've been training on Strickland for years. You know, I've been training on Strickland for a long time. So. Yeah, they had out here in uh, SoCal, right? Yeah. All right, man. So now let's let's go back down memory lane. First ever UFC fight debuted on Khabib versus McGregor, and you fought Vicente Luque. Now UFC 300. It seems like you're always on these big cards. The UFC always wants you on the big cards. What is it about it? You know, um, you just got to look at it as a business aspect. You know, it's like they want to see people perform and they want to see exciting fighters. And then I also like, I got on, I just bring, I just bring that energy. You know what I mean? Like I, I haven't been, the only time I was ever in a boring fight was when Gamera just was trying to just take me down the whole fight. You know what I mean? Or, or when Frivola was just taking me down the whole fight. But besides that, anytime I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get to finish, you know, I'm trying to keep the, the crowd hyped and, you know, like it does just my style, you know, like people want to see like that, that like it factor in the octagon, you know, like I don't, I'm not right. here crazy, you know, but when you go watch me fight, like, you know, like Jalen Turner is about to go perform, you know, every time. So I think I like, got a business, you know, they, they see that, they notice that, and that's who they want to, you know, be on these big cards and be exciting. And that's who they want to build, you know? Yeah, no, nah, it makes sense. I mean, if I, I did some little counting, I mean, I think I did it right. 12 fights in the UFC, nine of them on pay-per-view events. Like, that's <laughs> – I want to say this right now. If somebody's hearing this, y'all could maybe prove me wrong. I don't know if there's another fighter in the division who doesn't have the title who has that type of track record with the UFC and is still holding it up. They just don't put them on a fight card and say, hey, man, we just need to fill this over here. They're like, nah, we got something for them. We'll just have them wait. We'll just have them wait. I mean, that's that's got to be something right there, man. So just 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 hold on to that. Nine pay-per-view events out of your 12 fights, man. Dang. I didn't even keep track of that. But, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I, I fought on that Michelle Watterson card. And then I just did the uh, – the one in San Antonio, and then what was the third one? I don't even remember the third one. The but only yeah. one that you, yeah, but the only one that you uh like the more recent you co-made and invented it, you know, at the UFC Apex. So it was it was like you know like shit like yeah that's that's some right there man that's crazy man. All right, so speaking of events and fights, if you could pick your own MMA event, who would be your three commentators and your referee? Dang, three commentators, referee. Um, referee would be uh, Jake Herzog, and then commentators. Um, I probably do Paul Felder. I do DC, and then dang, nah, I don't know, bro. Just three. Mm -hmm. I like them all. I like Paul Felder a lot too. I said Paul Felder, DC. And either Joe Rogan or or, or John Eddick. Uh, like they're like tied. Dang, I don't know. But then got I like it, I like it. Visiting that's too. Visiting's my boy. Bro, I that can't. I can't. I don't know about that one. <laughs> hey, that's a good one though, right though, right? That's a good one right there, man. That's a good so one. no matter what, man, and I'll I'll even throw in, man. I mean, Laura, man, if she keeps doing what she's doing, man, she's putting on some good uh some good uh, information out there on the broadcast too. So she might be able to get up there sooner or later too. Yeah, she's a good one too. All right, man. So what's going on with Michael Chandler and Conor McGregor? Are they ever going to fight or are they just talking? Man, I hope they fight. You know, I, they need to. They need to. <laughs> man, they definitely need to fight, man. They definitely need to fight. Speaking of people that needs to fight. Paul Fielder went back in, you know, the the USADA pool when they had it. You know, he might be looking for a fight. Um, What about maybe, you know, after this win, you know, getting on the mic and, you know, welcoming Paul Fielder back into the cage? Nah, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> he already said he doesn't want to fight any of the, like, young guns, young up-and-comers. And, and I, it's funny because, like, I, I trained with Paul a long time ago. I didn't even know. I was training with Paul Felder, and then he just told me his name. He was like, yeah, Paul Felder. I was like, yo, what? Like, bro, I was still an amateur at the time. So it was crazy. That was back at Jackson Week. That was like years ago. But, um, yeah, yeah, Paul's a good dude, man. If he does come back, you know, give him somebody older. You know what I mean? Like, like 
you know, he's he's done so much for, in the sport, for the sport already. Like, yeah, give him somebody, like, up there. Got it, man. Got it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll keep that. We'll keep him for somebody else. So on this card, man, that you're fighting on, UFC 300, you got four lightweight fights on there, all bangers. Your opponent, Moicano, said he wasn't impressed with the fights on UFC 300. What's your thoughts on some of the fights on there, like uh, Gaethje versus Holloway? How you see that? I like them both. Um, I, I really respect both those men and, you know, just made the best man win at the end of the night. And I know that's going to be a heck of a fight. And honestly, now I think about it, man, it's going to be hard to get a bonus. All these crazy fights on this card. And, you know, I think everybody should get a bonus that gets finished that night. So let's see. Got it, man. And what about uh the Bronx, man? A lot of stuff going on. Uh, you know, whoever wins this fight could be right there at that number one title uh, next for Islam. Charles Oliveira versus Amaran Sarukian. Who you got in that one? Um, honestly, I, th I think Armand's going to push the pace and that's, I think it was going to be a little bit harder for Charles. Charles is still hungry though. You know, Charles, he could pull a slick submission, but you know, like honestly, I'm kind of, I'm kind of siding with Armand for this one, you know? So we shall see. We shall honestly, I don't even like, I don't even like picking fights until I see the weigh-ins. Like I got a, like a weird thing, like where I look at, I look at the energy and then I, I could kind of like, like better determine who's going to win once I see, like, see them, like, stare down. Well, I know one you don't got to wait for the weigh-in. So, uh, uh, Bobby Green and Jim Miller, who you got in that one? I think, like, I think, I think Bobby gets it done. I think, uh, you know, as long as Bobby keeps it slick on the feet, which he always does, and uh, sticks and moves, it's going to be, like, a, a harder puzzle for, for Jim to figure out. But Jim's been on a, on a tear himself, too, you know, and Jim has a killer ground game, so... It's, it's, it's no easy fight for either one of them, but uh, I'm I'm going to side with Bobby on that one. And then main event, who you got, Jamal Hill or Alex Pereira defending that belt? And no comment. No comment. Okay. Jamal, Jamal's my okay. boy. You know, Jamal's my boy. But I do uh, – I know Polino and, and Piera, they're cool. They're, they're cool. So, you know, I'm – I'm definitely, you know, I'm leaning more Jamal because that's my boy. Um, but you know, I no, nah, don't worry, don't worry. We ain't gonna. <laughs> I, I get it. I, I got you. I got you. I got. Bro, does it, does, I, I, does I it go past three rounds? Nah, nah. I think uh, I think it's done in the in the second. Got it, man. Got it, man. MMA versus reality, man. How do you balance both, man? You carry yourself as a martial artist, always humble, always respectful, always positive. Where do you get that from? Um, sure, dude. Just life and, and God and just everything I've been through, all the things that I, the way I perceive life has just changed and molded me so much. And, you know, just so many humbling experiences. And anytime I ever got a big head or got like, like, arrogant they they always say you know pride comes before the fall you know anytime i got prideful about anything and just it just all I always came a fall for me so i just keep it so level-headed and just so just chill you know and I, honestly i i do attest a lot of it to skateboarding too you know because like just being around all different walks of life and all different kinds of people you see you can go to any skate park and just vibe with anybody you know so it just mm -hmm. keeps me grounded so many things keep me grounded you know what i mean like and like you said, you know, being a martial artist instead of just, you know, just a fighter, you know what I mean? I do so much outside of just training, you know, it's like, I'm a family man, I'm a dad, you know, uh, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just me, You're man. You're a businessman. You got you got dog kennels. I mean, shooting AK-47s. I mean, <laughs> you know, like, you, you, you're doing everything, man, right? Bro, yeah, I can immerse myself in anything and everything, and I just do it and just the, the humblest way, the kindest way. And honestly, I've just been blessed to be around so many humble people, like especially like people in higher positions or people or places that I want to like visualize myself in. And like the more humble I see them, the better, you know, it's like, okay, like you, like you don't have to portray being this crazy image of this guy talking noise, or you don't have to portray this crazy stuff to like get all these people to like look, have eyes on you. Like you don't have to be that, you know, mm -hmm. you can be yourself, make your mark, make your money, influence people in a positive way and still be a role model for people. If that's, if that's what you get down, if that's what you want to do, you know, because everybody, everybody tries to be like, 
everybody wants to be something that they're not. And I'm just trying to be me and just continue to be me and portray who I am. And I don't care who likes it and who doesn't like it. And the people that like it, they're, I'm, I'm riding for them. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's just how it is. So that's it. That got it, man. Got it. Just got two more things for you, and then we'll get you out of here, man. You don't got to speak too much on it, but uh, new management or anything like that going on? New, uh, still with the same team, same camp, or anything? Anything change? Uh, no management. Uh, I, I switched management last year, it was, you know, just business. It was just business at the end of the day, and then, um, not really a new camp. I mean, kind of a new camp. I mean, I just yeah, new camp, new coach, you know. Mm-hmm. Ozzy's Ozzy still here. Ozzy's still in my corner. You know, that's that's my grappling coach to the end for sure. And then, yeah, that's it, you know, just figuring out the striking, doing the striking mainly. You know, a bit on my own, just finding, like, some, you know, finding a home in that aspect, you know. It's been cool. It's been different. But I've always bounced around and trained in different places anyway, so it's just one of those things. I've been at Classic a little bit, and then I've been training uh, – Another spot in Anaheim, just, you know, just bouncing around. Got it, man. Last thing on this one, man. It seems like in, in other sports, everybody kind of knows what, what's going on when it comes to, like, pay, fighter pay, uh, contracts and stuff like that. You don't got to speak too much on it. But some people in rea- out here in reality, they think when fighters get paid, let's just say $80,000, you know, or 40000 to show up. 40,000 if they win. They think that those fighters are walking home with 80,000 not knowing that they probably got to get 15% to the gym, 10% over here, another 10%. They probably maybe walk away with maybe 55, 60 just depending on who it is and everything. Um can can, can you speak a little bit just just on that? Like we'll just use a, a dollar amount out there and just say like if a fighter's like in your category or your statue at this stage getting like let's just say $80,000 walking away with what, what exactly are the percentage do you take home or anything like that after you pay everybody? Let's see. Ten. Like you take take home like maybe like 60 percent. 65, 70. 65, 70, getting to that better one now. Earlier on, maybe 60. Now you're getting that 70. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But you know, and it also depends on I could like that starts once you once you make more it, it it doesn't it doesn't affect you as much you know it still affects you but it doesn't affect you as much so you know it's just all about still climbing and still it's still a game of it's still a business at the end of the day so you got to treat everything as a business and you got to you know learn how to write everything off get with a good CPA is gonna like take care of all that stuff too and. You know, you pay your pay your coaches, pay your taxes, and pay your management, and then, you know you gotta manage everything else after that and try to live under your means. So it's part of the game. All right, man. That's fun. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you out of here, man. Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. Who you got? Bro, I don't even know why that fight is even happening. Like that's so <laughs> crazy to me. Like, like that. play this out though. Listen. If it's all said and done, two, three years from now, he might have the chance to say Anderson Silva, Tyrone Woolley, Ben Askren. I, I forget who else, but like if if he's able to get that Mike Tyson name under that, come on. Yeah. That's crazy. Nah, bro. <laughs> no, that's the nah. It's bro, it's just a money grab. Like, I don't even consider that. I don't even consider none of that like fights. Like that's just, I don't, I don't understand it. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I understand. Like that's he's just, he's just leveraging the marketing ability he has right now. You know, he's trying to make that money, and I get it. You know, it's like you want to make your money, you want to do it however you want to do it, do it. Like I'm not knocking the hustle, but I'm knocking the hustle because like. Don't do it like that. You know, I don't know, bro. Like people do anything for a dollar, and I just never mm. put those types. You know, like I don't care about it. Like I don't care if it's if it's celebrity show and go. I don't care if it's exhibition, whatever. Like, like go fight a legit fighter and then talk like talk about it. You know what I mean? Like do that, but like don't don't go trying to like, bro. He's when well, he's younger than me. Like fighting Mike Tyson, like for what? For bragging rights? For X amount of dollars? Like. 
who cares? Like, who cares? Got it. Doing think. it for the clout. I'm doing yeah. it for the clout. Hell yeah, man. So go ahead, man. Shout out everybody that you've been rocking with. Shout out your sponsors, anybody you've been working with uh, behind the scenes, some training partners, um, the floor is yours, family members, whatever you want. Just uh, go ahead. Uh, let everybody know, um, you know, what you got going on and where they can follow you at and support you as well. Man, you know, honestly, man, just shout out to everybody that loves and supports me. Shout out to my family. Shout out to my significant other. Shout out to my kids. Shout out to my mom. Shout out to my management, my coaches. Thank you for having me on. Um, to all my sponsors. <sighs> man, it's, it's so many people to thank. You know, I just, I just, I just say, you know, that's all love. That's it. Got it, man. Got it. All right. So let everybody know what they can expect coming up. UFC 300 in Las Vegas, man. I know you don't like to talk a lot or anything like that, but I mean, if you were to finish this guy and get on that mic, you usually don't call out anybody. Is there anybody you might just call out on the mic? <laughs> nah, I ain't calling nobody out. There's no need for me to call nobody out. If they want to talk, if they want to fight, they call a manager. They set up the match. They set it up with the matchmaker. We handle business. That's how we do it. There's no need to project any of that. I'm not buying into none of that marketing tactic. Like, you know, it's authentic. All, all authentic right here. Hey, that's that's what's up. Never going to change. All all real, authentic, no gimmicks. Jalen Turner, all about the business, man. Um, all right. Last time, any predictions for him to what to expect? Moicano just was on the MMA hour and said that he, I'm gonna finish him in the first round. I'm gonna finish him and get my money. Any any predictions on you know how the fight's gonna play out when you're gonna finish him and how? <laughs> All right, what's let's just let's just put it this way. On what round is most of my finishes and my wins come in? Number one. I'm going to just leave it at that. Hey, you already know how it goes, man. MMA locker room here. Jalen Turner, the tarantula here. We want picks. We'll see you guys next time we're in the booth. Hopefully, you guys hit the like, hit the subscribe every single time so you know when we go live.